I've been asked to do a quick video on my workshop space so I thought we'd uh, do it in true homes under the hammer style so this is what it looks like normally when I'm working in it and this is what I like to try and make it look like for photography there we go tidied up ready for photo op well for this video really it's still a big star in there what can I say it's a workshop but at least it's one I can see the work surfaces of now so a quick tour then as I was asked uh, there's my four uh, main power tools that I use um, ready to go finally back on the desk rather than being over in this area which is where I do most of my work I'm working on some gauntlets and some legs at the moment all through lockdown um, because the lockdown has really reduced the amount of time I'm actually in the workshop and there's my shell shelves a couple of shelves just filled with all the regular bits and pieces that I use uh, on a daily basis <clears throat> excuse me at this end we have the uh, usual pile of stuff that ends up just being pushed to the end of the workshop because you need it but not quite at that time and in amongst all this polythene bits is all the various cleaning kits and mops that get used on this little beast which is well overdue replacement but he seems to be hanging in there and here if I can get hold of him, there he is, I'm give him a clean. <laughs> yeah. So that little uh, blacksmith there was bought for me by my wife as a little gift when I did a blacksmithing course back in about, oh goodness me, 2006 or so. Um, we'll go past this bit quickly because it's really messy. Uh, so there's my uh, metal store as is at the minute. There's all sorts of bits and pieces and sheets in here. I'm my way through and I've got a load up in Liverpool which uh, another armourer is holding for me because we had to order some high carbon steel from Europe. Uh, some tongs, I don't use many tongs, you see blacksmith shops there filled with tongs. To be fair I only use a couple of those. Uh, swage block which holds a lot of the stakes which I've lost because I've moved them all. Around the back there and just down there. The biggest problem I have is having bits of work that I'm doing so there's some greaves and a helmet ready to go and you can see the shelves up here filled with bits and pieces and jobs which are ready uh, for fittings and for people to uh, come along to and for me to get on with and there's the carnal house of uh, body casts I've taken for folk that I'm working on at the minute I was thinking of suspending them all from the ceiling but I don't know it might be too much of a horror story so that's the shelves where everything goes that was all across the floor earlier and there's a sort of brass copper bronze store there so you can see my workshop's quite small really there's my forge number one so that's franken forge he was a prototype that i made um about oh, i can't remember how many years ago now um quick sort of working sketch if you like which has just stayed there ever since and across here we have bride of franken forge which is this downpipe forge both in need of replacement which i'm planning on doing this year uh, as uh, ribbon forges various stakes my plastic quench tank um, ready to go with water and that one has oil and the other side of the workshop I won't show you because it's where most of the rubbish that was on this side has gone uh, is my wife's side of the workshop so I'm in serious trouble later so anyway I spend most of my time here there and there and that's my working day so I hope this has given you a little insight into it this is why when I ask at Quest events people say oh do you do studio tours it's like, no um, because it's be very short and there's no room for a gift shop so a quick overview of my working area. Um, I defy anybody to um, do their craft as a full-time job and have a worse, smaller workshop. I'd love to see it if you can manage it. So there you go. Take care and uh, I hope this was insightful.